It's the Bobby Von Doran Show. Here's your host, Bobby Von Doran. Thank you, Georgie. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, we got a great show. Please welcome my first guest, Suzanne Church. Hello. Oh, you're really tall. Well, tell us about yourself, Suzanne. I write science fiction, fantasy, and horror because I love them all and hate to play favorites. Currently, I have a book out called Elements, a collection of speculative fiction. It contains 21 short stories, some science fiction, some fantasy, and some horror. It's available in print and pixels online or in bookstores from Amazon or Edge. Uh, you can also find it at Chapters. You write mostly dark fiction. Why focus on this genre? I would say one of the things that's really awesome about writing horror or dark fiction, dark fantasy, is that it gives you a chance to really examine the hardest, darkest, scariest parts of people's lives because that's where real drama happens. And in my opinion, writing horror allows you the freedom to scare yourself and scare others, but it also allows you to just explore that dark side of humanity. I mean, we're all a little bit afraid of that monster that lives on, under the bed or the boogeyman in the closet, but for the most part, we as a species try our best to kind of think positive about ourselves, think positively about the world, and to work towards kind of a, a higher level of being. And so in horror, it gives you a chance to kind of take a step back and really examine the darker side of humanity, the darker sides of all of us, you know, that that need to hurt or maim or, you know, even go so far as to kill someone. I mean, as a woman, do you find it more difficult to get published? That's really a hard nut to crack. It's maybe. I mean, I've always written under my own name. I've never tried to write under uh, a male pseudonym or with my initials. So it's possible that had I gone that route, I would have discovered different sales opportunities than what I've experienced. But it's hard to say. Um, I think more than anything, women, we sometimes have a harder time being treated as equals in any workplace, be it in the corporate world, in teaching, in, in the arts. I think that we're aware of it as women and we do our best to kind of push past that barrier and be our own people and work as hard as we can and hope for the best. And if sometimes, perhaps on the occasion, you bump across an editor or a publisher or you know, um, a consumer, a reader who doesn't necessarily treat female writers the same as male writers, well then, you know, you smile and wave and move on. Um, and so maybe that's not been the best route to take with respect to my career, but it's the one I've taken and I'm happy with it. Fascinating stuff. We'll be right back after our word from our sponsor. Ooh, hold up there, little soul. Looks like someone's plugging the road. Nibbies! Who are you, stranger? What you doing standing there? We are the knights who say Nibbies! Nibbies! The knights who say Nibbies? Don't you mean the knights who say me? No, oh, those are other knights. We are the knights who say Nibbies! Nibbies! Stop it! Oh, I get it. You're talking about Breakpoint Nibbies, the latest novel by Clark Award nominee Alison Sinclair. Nibbies! Stop it! Latest in her play confederacy series, Breakpoint Nerese is full of action and political intrigue. Exactly, and if you wish to pass, you must bring us a copy of Breakpoint Nerese. Nerese! Shh! You boys mean that copy of Breakpoint Nerese sitting on yonder horse? Right. What's a book doing on a horse? Nerese! And you're back with our guest, Suzanne Church. Suzanne, tell me, do you feel like you've made it? That is one of those loaded questions. You know, it's funny. In any field, and I think writers are just as guilty as anyone else, the longer you work at something, the more goals you set for yourself. So I would say each time that I feel I've hit a goal, I feel like I've made it. Um... Winning an award at Aurora was exciting for me. 
I'll never forget that feeling of winning or even of being nominated because the first year I was nominated, I didn't win. And I found that just so thrilling to be nominated and to get my Aurora pin. Now I've been nominated four times and it's still exciting. I still kind of want to win a little bit, but if I don't win, it's not the end of the world. And uh, it would be nice to be recognized in other award areas. There are other awards in our fields, the Stokers, the Nebulas, the Hugos, you know, the Sunbursts, what have you. But ultimately, I think what matters is that my fiction is connecting with readers. And if that's happening, then I'm doing my job. What about the dreaded writer's block? How do you handle that? Writer's block is evil. I think we all get it. I think we get pieces of it, especially around the middle to second two-thirds of a book where we feel like the whole thing is crap and we should just stop and, you know, the plot is useless. I think we all feel that way in the middle of a book. But there have been times in my life when uh, my personal life was getting to an ugly place. Um, and when that happens, it is very difficult to write. And I have tried my best to follow something called the 100 words a day rule, where I tried to write at least 100 words every day, no matter how good or bad a day I'm having, no matter how many things have come up, no matter how many errands I have to run or kids things I have to go to or, you know, meetings I have to attend. So I, I, but when I'm having a bad case of block, usually what that means is that I'm struggling through a book in particular, and I haven't quite decided how to work out the kinks in that book. So I will tend to do other things. Either I'll journal and write just some personal anecdotes, or I'll write on some short fiction or some poetry to try to get away from that block that I'm having with that book. But a, a friend of mine uh, who was one of the first teachers I ever had as a writer, Ann Crispin, used to tell me that whenever she was blocked, she would clean a bathroom or two. And uh, she said <laughs> there were times when she was blocked that she had a very, very clean house with lots of clean bathrooms. So if you give yourself a job to do that is so awful that you do not want to do it, um, and that's the alternative if you're blocked, well, then sometimes that can help. Um, and a final quick question, outliner or pantser? Well, I will say that I'm a little bit of both. When it comes to my short fiction, I tend to be a pantser. I'll have one idea and I'll just start writing and I'll see what happens. And sometimes that first section of what I write ends up getting cut from the story. And sometimes it ends up being the foundation of the story. But I find, especially with short fiction and because it is such a, a small condensed notion of an idea, the best thing to do is just write it out as quickly and as without research as I can muster. Because research slows me down, it gets me thinking too much about, you know, should I use this word here or that word there? And then I get into more of an editing vibe than a writing vibe. Uh, when it comes to a novel though, I would say I'm definitely a planner. I have uh, extensive spreadsheets that have lists of characters, lists of settings, lists of um, sometimes languages, certainly the vocabulary that different characters will use. Um, and that spreadsheet section becomes this foundation for the next thing, which is planning out the plot points, figuring out if I'm hitting the beats just right at each level. Is this the high point? Is this the, um, the rest period where I'm trying to kind of do a little more internal dialogue and have a little more character growth? Planning a novel takes a lot more work. Well, that's all the time we have. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Uh, I would like to thank my guest, Suzanne Church, and from Jersey C, and my age, Bobby Bundoran. Until next time, and remember, keep well and keep reading. Thank you.